Okay, so the next step that we're going to need to do is export the weapon. Right click the skeleton. It's going to export the weapon and the skeleton of the weapon out so we can animate it in Maya. Just go down to asset actions and then there's going to be an option to select export and that's going to export the mesh and the skeleton. It's then going to ask you where you want to save your weapon. Just go ahead and put the weapon in the folder where your art tools is housed and it automatically will come with the weapon folder so just go ahead and place the weapon right in that folder there and you will be able to um, reference that weapon in and we'll show you how to do that inside of Maya when we get to that step. So now that we have the weapon exported, we need to export the animations, same process, right click the animations, go into asset actions and hit the export. Now keep in mind that you can also choose to do a batch export, uh, but in this case I'm just showing you how to export each one individually. And you just go ahead and point to the folder uh, where you want to house your animations. There's already an animation folder inside of the art tools. Uh, hierarchy where we saved our weapon and where the rigs and the exports are so you can go ahead and export the animations into that folder um, and then we'll be able to basically bring in those exported animations into Maya and start working with creating some custom animations and poses uh, based on these exported animations and rigs that we exported out of the engine. Okay, so for this section of the course, we're going to bring in our idle animation. Now this is the animation that we exported out of Unreal. We're going to hit the import button and we're going to select IK and uh, we are going to then select our animation that we select that we um, Im exported out of Unreal. This is our idle here. And then we're just going to go ahead and click the import button and then it is going to import the animation. Now you'll notice that in this particular animation they rotated the character uh, 90 degrees. Um, so this will just allow us to work with the base uh, poses and animations that they already have connected into Unreal with the blueprints. So this will basically kind of save you that uh, guesswork as well so that you'll know exactly where that base pose is. If you want to change that pose, you can. If you want to modify the timing, if you want to make it longer or shorter, this is essentially how you're going to modify that animation that comes uh, into the Unreal uh, software uh, for the first person and uh, any other blueprints that are going to come into the uh, mannequin based uh, projects that are default uh, in the Unreal project. So when you bring in that animation, you're going to see that the animation has now been brought onto the mannequin rig. Uh, you're going to notice that the arm is hyper extended out and uh, we're not going to really need to animate that. Uh, so we can just go ahead and delete any animation out of there. And then you just basically want to translate this shoulder down until the wrist is not locked out. So you can drag it all the way down. It doesn't really matter. You're not going to see that shoulder. Um, and then you're also going to want to adjust that elbow joint as well and just delete that animation. And you can leave it, uh, leave it at a default position here. Or you could drag it out. I think it's fine, the default. And then we might adjust this shoulder some more to make sure that this geometry isn't uh, being shown in the uh, camera view. But for now, this is uh, all we really need to do. Uh, the purpose for this is to basically get this pose that is in uh, Unreal and bring it into Maya so that you can modify the timing, you can modify the pose. Uh, but in our lecture, we're just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna use this as our base pose for all of the animations, the firing and the reloading, and then any other additional animations that you do or custom animations will be based off of this start and end pose. So that's really the importance of making sure you get this pose in there if you're gonna be working from the base uh, animations that are in the Unreal project. So this process really can go for any third person uh, type of animation that you're gonna, do, gonna be doing out of Unreal. That process is the same of exporting out the animation and then bringing it back into the mannequin here in Maya. Uh, one other thing you want to note is you can kind of see how broken this pose looks uh, from the third person view. So if you have enemies that are in the game that are going to be idling and running around, you're going to end up having to have specific animations that are necessary 
for the first person and the third person views. So uh, we're going to be working on strictly just the first person animations. Uh, there are some other animation packs out there that'll have some idols uh, for third person and uh, you'll be able to, to utilize that. But for this particular project, we're really only focusing on the arms here. And that's basically what you're going to be seeing in this Unreal project as well. So you can kind of see they don't even have the geometry really for anything else. They do have the shoulders up here, uh, but we're not going to really need to worry about that because it's not going to really be in our scene. And you can kind of see that bend in that elbow. And we're basically just kind of mimicking that um, pose in Maya and you can kind of see some of the fakes and tricks that they did uh, because basically when you play this game uh, you, you don't really see the uh, hand and you're mainly just seeing that motion on the gun that's coming from the character's arm so if I eject out you can kind of see where that motion's coming from it's just basically being driven by this arm here and then that hand is just kind of floating out so that's up to you you can go ahead and change this pose you can move the hand out uh, we can kind of adjust that and i'll show you kind of what you can do with that process of exporting and modifying things uh, but what the first thing that we need to do next is to get the weapon in the character's hand and then we also need to kind of create a mimicked uh, camera that we can kind of see in maya that will give us a rough idea of what we'd be seeing in game here so switching back uh, you can kind of see um, the similarities of uh, what we're working with in, in uh, the Maya scene. So in the next part, we're just going to bring in that gun and uh, work our way through uh, setting up everything in Maya the way we'd be seeing it in Unreal. And uh, if you have any other questions, always feel free to reach out to us. We'd be glad to help. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.